Now back to the other fake bomb story. Democrats sent bombed in force headquarters, Operation Erratus. Um, search for bomb suspect intensifies. They're thinking the suspect is in Florida. But that's interesting. If he's in Florida, how did he hand deliver, or she, we don't want to assign a gender to the bomber, how did they place bombs in George Soros's mailbox? Sneaky, sneaky. Sneaky, sneaky. Investigators hunting for the terrorists behind 10 suspected bombs addressed to prominent Democrats and outspoken critics of President Trump have zeroed in on Florida and New York. At least some of the packages were sent from Florida, according to two federal officials briefed on the investigation. And it appears that most went through the postal system, even though they didn't have postage enough to get to their destination. Early Thursday, three more packages were found, two addressed to former Vice President Joe Biden in Delaware, where he lives, and one to actor Robert De Niro. They all had the telltale signs associated with the seven others. Manila envelopes, six U.S. flag stamps, and return addresses of a Florida office of rep. Debbie Wasserman Schultz with her latest, with her last name misspelled. These devices should be considered dangerous, said William Sweeney, assistant director of the Federal Bureau of Investigations. He said a probe is in its early stages and the agency is working quickly to analyze clues from the packages at its facility in Quantico. Yeah, this is all fear terror porn. To get everybody freaking out before the elections. I'd like to hear what old Pastor Sam has to say. He was called last night. Pastor Sam, what do you think about all this nut jobness? Robert De Niro has been such an outspoken and obnoxious critic of our president, the great Donald Trump. And, you know, you can't help looking back at but love the De Niro movies. Uh, come on, Ronan, on and on, meet the Fockers. But the fact is, Robert De Niro is not really his own man. He is the junior partner in an awkward Batman and Robin bromance. And there's, he has a hero, and that hero is the person that he's always portraying. So when he portrays the super spook and meet the parents or meet the Fockers or the little Fockers, all his movies, or uh, when he portrays the great CIA superhero in Ronan, he's really portraying a real person. Not only that, this person, after his many, many years in the CIA, has retired to Austin, and he's got his own bat cave. It's all public record, by the way. If anybody's dumb enough to write something on a document and file it at the courthouse and put it on the Internet, I think we all ought to know. But you roll on southwest of Austin. And out there on Tawana Road at 8930, it looks like there's nothing there. It's just a long, long uh, cedar fence, like uh, two houses adjoined back to back up against the uh, power line easement. But it's hundreds of feet long. Well, you push a button, and that fence opens up. And in there is the secret unmarked bat compound of Robert De Niro's hero, CIA super spy Milton Alexander Bearden. This is the person that De Niro is always trying to portray. This is the person that hates America and has worked for decades and decades to destroy our democratic system. He's my personal enemy, and uh, I think he knows something about these pipe bombs now that Robert De Niro's got one. And I think uh, that the SWAT team ought to go pay him a visit. As many that's times, very interesting. That is very. Have you been to the secret lair that you talk about? Uh, no, I don't. I don't go bother people. I just pray. But <laughs> Milton has stingrayed and SWAT teamed my personal gospel Jesus preaching mission team more than once, and it's time for him to get a taste of his own medicine. And it's time for the Austin Police Department and the powers that be that. Many of them are elected, and, you know, they de derive their just powers from the consent of the governed. And if there are people that have decided to come in and be above the law and to control everything from above and to make little phone calls and have SWAT teams go bother their enemies who are just nothing but poor people out healing the sick and preaching Jesus, maybe, maybe. 
people like Governor Abbott ought to consider whether they want that. You know, this guy also speaks Chinese. That was the first DLI language course that he went to before he took his first chief of station job in Singapore. And if you think that he is not involved with all this Chinese activity at UT Austin, Milt Bearden is up to his eyeballs in it. Oh, also Charlie Wilson's war, which De Niro was heavily involved in the backfield of. Also the Good Shepherd. Uh, Milton Bearden really wrote all those movies, consulted on all those movies, and they're his, the glorified version of, of his conquests out in the world. By so the it's a, his autobiographies, essentially. Yes. Well, uh, self-glorifying, his aggrandized right. autobiographies, yes. But make no mistake, at the end of Rowan, where Robert De Niro said, CIA, and the other character says, I thought you left, and he said, I never left. That is the story of Milton Kite. Mm. George Bush, 43, asked him to lead the agency, and he was happier on the outside quarterbacking Islamic relations around the world. Also did a DLI course for Russian, also did a DLI course for uh, Arabic, all level five difficulty, Monterey, California, all three of them. He is a super genius because he's a Manchurian candidate and a program multiple. Anyhow, my personal enemy lives in your backyard. He's running all this. And every time that Robert De Niro shoots his mouth off, I'll tell you who's behind it. Milton Alexander Bearden. And all the info warriors just ought to know that he's over there causing trouble. And maybe the Austin PD ought to go talk to him because Robert De Niro's getting stage prop pipe bombs in some big hoax. That's the guy that knows all about it. Well, I think that's one thing we can be assured is that these pipe bombs are a hoax. We had a former Secret Service agent said that this is a hoax. My prediction is that whoever they pin this on will not be alive when they find him. Either shooting, hanging, blowing himself up, their cells up. We don't want to say it's a male, but probably a male when they pin this on somebody. And it'll be somebody with with a history of looking at the Drudge Report, because we've already seen that pop out, a history of looking at InfoWars, and they're going to come out and say, we can't have these sites on anymore. And that's how they're going to go after him. That's my prediction, that this guy will not be taken alive. And I'm not saying the person that they pin this on is the guy who did it. That's probably not it. But whoever they pin this on, they will not be alive. Remember... When we had the Boston bombing, we think back and we had the FBI hold up pictures and said, we're looking for these two individuals. We don't know who they are. We don't know who they are, except they had interviewed the older brother twice, his mother once, and had received tips from the Russians that this guy was traveling to Chechnya under an assumed name. But they held up their pictures and pretended they didn't know who they were. They told you they were having black backpacks. They were carrying black backpacks. But then you look at pictures of the brother, and he's got a gray backpack. And they said, well, he must have had the backpack inside the backpack, and he pulled it out. And then the older brother, it looks like they're arresting a guy who looks exactly like him. He's butt naked. They're putting him in a car. There's video of it. But the bolder brother ends up dead. This is all the FBI by the way, and then they go and interview these brothers' friend who was an MMA fighter who had a torn ACL, just had surgery, and two FBI agents claim he attacked them, and they had to shoot him dead. And all this is documented. You can find it. Todashev was the guy that they killed. And it just makes you wonder whose side these government agencies really are on. When you look at all these terror plots that the FBI foils time and time again, and it's always thanks to an FBI informant who happened to be getting them the bomb and convinced them to do it and told them where to set it and how to bring it up. See, that's Tamerlan Zarnayev. That was the guy in the boat. You probably can't even find the photo of the naked brother that they were putting into a car 
on an empty street where they had a shootout. You probably can't find that on the internet anymore. You search that on YouTube, it's just going to be CNN, Fox News, maybe a Joe Rogan clip, Time Magazine, AP, nothing from people anymore. You can't find anything from people on YouTube. But if you look up, I think we had an InfoWars article. Um, Tamerlan's our knave, or no, uh, Jock, Tamerlan's our knave, that was the older brother. What looks like he appeared to be arrested. And there's pictures of him. He's got his hands behind his back, and they're putting him in a car. Then he shows up dead on a table, and they're like, well, we don't know what happened. He was dead. He, his brother ran him over. Brother ran him over. 